Yeah, I can imagine her moving around Starfire's options. She has her own zoning and counter zoning options. That was sick. On that jump uh, down three, extending a little bit over much. And a nice toss there by Scar. Okay. Putting Tweety a little bit closer to the corner. And oh no. I'm not Air sure. Right, I've got to think that was a drop. Yeah, no, definitely a drop. Tweety didn't have enough bar for an air escape even if he wanted to do it. Woo. Ooh, the back creek does trade. Luckily for Scar, he does knock Tweety down. But hold on, Tweety trying to make this comeback. Isn't it funny that both of these characters' character powers are, are, are both zoning tools? Yeah, it's true. Very, very different. Right. Uh, definitely different. Uh, you know, Starfire is more of like a, a zoning enhancing tool. Yeah. You know, she can either rock it raw or she can, you know, use it to extend combos, use it to extend projectiles. More of a dedicated zoner, whereas for Supergirl, she's just kind of a jack of all trades. Yeah. She can get in your face. She can, you know, keep the face nice and slow at full screen. Ooh, that's Ooh. amazing anti-air button. One of the best. Yeah, that back two. Got to be ready with it. And get out of there is Scar. He needs to take off the skin on this fish. Hasn't quite done it. Trying to move forward behind it. No. Oh, wow. Great spacing there by Scar. Making Tweety overcommit and overreach there where Star puts it home. Oh, okay. Tweety ends up getting a bunch of damage out of that. Moving forward very cautiously, but nevertheless doing so. And that finally is going to be the round. As a smart toss there by Scar, it kind of knew and, and fished out the fact that, that Tweety was just going to hold on to block and, and wasn't going to press a button here. Tweety taking the overhead here. Scar, as he comes down with the pile driver, the Tamaranian charge doesn't get him out of the corner like he had hoped. Okay. Well, we see a clash, and that's exactly what comes here. Tweety has two bars. Scar just the one. Just the one bar. Is he going to spend it? Okay. Tweety spending one bar for 15% of his health back. Rushing in here is Scar, all of a sudden on the ground approach. That's a lot of chip damage right there. Hold on, but gets, okay. can he make this happen? You know, one more good mix, well, honestly, maybe two more good mix-ups here for Supergirl. Okay, doesn't end up working. We're kind of not really on his side. Yeah. Everything was on the line, that would have been huge if Scar were to pull that upset. She does have a couple of different wake-ups you gotta look for, and they could both be dealt with, but you gotta look for which one's coming. Push her back. Okay, Great reactions punish. there. You know, that's the not, damage mounts. Look at this yellow. You know, a teleport like that is not too easy to sniff out in a, in a game where you have to hold back the block. Uh -huh. So, you know, that just shows you, you know, what kind of reactions Tweety has. Trying to get the whip punish, but he wasn't quite there. And then that's going to get the chip. It's a very strong round right there by Tweety. In very much control, he's got the stage. He's got the big life lead. Okay, maybe not for long. Great call out there by Scar. Utilizing that Supergirl forward air dash to make sure he got on Tweety. Tweety with a delay wake up, avoiding the statue, avoiding the interactive. Very smart. Great awareness. Harassing here in the corner. There's not a lot of strong mix-ups out of it, but he's just maintaining pressure. He's trying to get Scar to, you know, crack and, and, and press that down to. Down to a little bit one of the riskier buttons here. Uh, in that situation, but you know, I feel like Tweety did do what he wanted to do, and he, he said, "Okay, Scar's going to rely on the down two. He's going to disrespect me next time, so I'm just going to wait and probably punish it." Still trying to maintain some control, trying to meet a murder action, but no, not quite. Oh my God, the wickets have been so consistent from Tweety, and as we said, we got you got a mix up between the three that she has, but he's been doing it so well. Down one is a great way to stop it if you're anticipating it. And you know, that, that's really what Scar is doing. He's, he's anticipating and, you know, not, not specifically reacting to it, but really reacting to the situation. You know, Tweet is in that range where he wants to come in with that high attack. Let me get under it with my down two. Cool okay. kick. Hops up there and just gets the statue. Scar's playing it very patiently, not trying to, to initiate any kind of zoning game himself. And what side did that hit on Tweety? Cashing in lots of stuff, especially with this background bounce. So much damage here right in Scar's oh, nice. face, and Scar just wakes up through it. Okay, yep, gets the overhead. But very little damage. He had bar. Might have not been it now. That should have been a background bounce territory. Possibly looking oh, for that. Oh, that might have been yeah. what he wanted, yeah. Right. Okay, wow, what a whiff punish there, and that's match point now for Tweety. 
And right there, that's Tweety understanding how far Supergirl's back, uh, forward air dash is actually going to bring yeah. her. Right outside that range, go ahead, Scar. Press a button because I'm going to whip punish you for it. Now, this is looking pretty heavily in Tweety's favor here. Complete control. Can Scar make this comeback? Can he make this happen? Okay. The round. Well, he's dropped this a couple of times. Ends up getting it. Kind of a funky interaction. Yeah, I don't know, man. It, it, it was a little silly, but I, I feel like Tweety got out of the corner, which is what he wanted. Never okay. mind, as he just air dashes back into it. Tony's value respect. You definitely don't want to tell a Kryptonian to, to soak up some sun. That just makes them stronger. I know, stronger. right? Yeah. <laughs> just makes them stronger. Oh, the anti pair. Yeah, back to you. Such so a great good. normal. Mm -hmm. Trying to snipe a little bit from afar. Scar, the intention is not just the zone. He wants to get a knockdown and then move forward. Exactly. That is exactly what Scar sees. Uh, you know, couldn't really move forward there because of the, the Stardust in the way. But, you know, he, he's pushing Tweety a little bit closer to the corner. Gets the, the throw. Took the risk on it. The risky stuff there, as we saw earlier, him. Oh, here's it a chance. And that could have been a lot. Did you know, that really could have been a lot right there for Scar. It's a big drop for him. I'm, I'm not sure. I feel like Scar did have the meter there. Maybe he, he just did. didn't press it. Maybe he thought he didn't have the meter just yet. He had a lot of bar. I don't know. He's in big trouble right now. Starfire just trying to set up an inescapable chip situation. Okay. Alive. Barely, but alive. The wake up is going to do it. That 4-3 whiff. And that will be it. Tweety. Just, just his brother Biohazard. Just All right, here we go. The slow things. approach for Biohazard. Wow, he waited and he saw that Deoxys was grounded, so goes for the grab. That's safe. But I love the dash. Oh, man. Great awareness there by Deoxys, so he knew exactly where he was on screen. Again, that is a problem, unfortunately, for Bane. <laughs> that is definitely going to be a problem, and I hope Biohazard's taking notes, and, you know, just in case he does lose his match, possibly going for a, a, a stage switch. Right. Deoxys, of course, wants to be back in the middle. Doesn't want to find himself anywhere near the corner. Uh, Especially with, with that interactable. He can yeah. move a little bit more. Harder to peck him down. Here we go. Down two start. Not a, well, it's, I was going to say not a, not a lot of damage, but it's Bane. Okay, down two. The dash cancel intended there by Biohazard did not work out. Oh, went over to the other side Ooh. and just waited for him, baited him out, out of the sky. And there, now here, this is not where you want to be. Bane's got wow, armor. He used that string. I never see a Bane use it. Sick. I'm not sure if that was supposed to be. Maybe he was just banking on the fact that Deoxys was going to move. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It was pretty weird. And, but, like, you know, there was no tick throw there. Like, no, you it cannot, doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, you cannot tick throw there. So, not sure. Oh, oh my God. Can you get, oh. He just needs one more hit. No, the low. It wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. Deoxys. Are we going to see wake up uppercut? Are we going to see wake up uppercut? No. There it is. Traded charge does the trick. I was just going to make a comment about how he pumped up Venom before Deoxys even jumped in. No. It's like he knew before oh, yeah. it even happened. <laughs> this Blue Beetle is jumping in. Going to utilize some meter to extend the combo. Back three for the bounce and hold on. Oh, boy, it hit. Oh, this is big trouble right now. This is oh, yeah. oh, oh that was gonna hurt. Oh my god, yeah. it still hurts. Yeah, I'm right. <laughs> Two bars of peace. If Biohazard decides to hold on to it because he knows a bounce cancel is really, really gonna be effective if he does finally get his hands on Blue Beetle. He's honestly just a few, a few hits away. From yeah, death. if he finds one hit and then gets the right combo with the level three Venom, that's gonna do it. That's gonna be it. Level two Venom, you gotta watch that character power. You can see it right there on the bottom of the screen. Okay. Goes for the uppercut, oh disrespecting boy. that gap. Oh boy! It's gonna hurt. It, it is hurting! Oh, 625! Oh, oh, oh. And then the air right there, he has to go for the clash to stay alive, but so much more meter on Deoxys' side, he can force this to be almost the end for Biohazard. You cannot absorb anything. Yeah, that's gonna be it. It was it was it was the hard read, and that's what Bio Hey, so it is, a it is a stage switch right there for Biohazard. As you said, I think that's the right call. You don't get to choose which stage, but you can go to a random one. That's what he did. Yeah, no, that, that's that's definitely the, 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 the right call. Blowing up the interactables while he can. Slow walk back by Deoxys, trying to just time out that Venom. He's done so at least for level one. Oh, wow. Movement right there is perfect by Deoxys. Just consistently excellent movement, spacing, knowing when to control. 
Here it is. Wake up. That was, that was, that was fireball. Wake up. Oh, oh that's okay. gonna hurt. That's gonna hurt. Oh, he even spent two bars, and it didn't matter at all. Plus, oh, moving it though. Just respected it. Deox is ready to swing right afterwards. Look at that very slow level three debuff slowly come back. And Deox has threatened the approach. No. And, and I feel like even though that that level three debuff, that level three withdrawal was was, was active. You know, he didn't really make a move. He just kind of, he's okay with playing it the way Biohazard wants to play it, you know? Whip punish, nice. And we're gonna extend this combo here. No air escaper, but by Biohazard. Biohazard, yep. Yeah. Oh, he moves forward. That's gonna be the round, just like that. Just almost instantly it's over. If Bane has two bars, you're yeah, dead. No, it's over. Yeah. <laughs> you're dead. Who <laughs> tried to come man grab? What a gutsy fellow. I mean, I feel like he, even because of the, because he had such low life right there in that last situation, he didn't want to go for uppercut because he knew the armor wasn't going to be enough, yeah. uh, you know, to withstand the hit. So I, I guess I, I see why. It, I he's a little bit of a methodical player. And, and I'm seeing it a lot in his decision making, you know, you know, play by play. Yeah. And Bane, although he's a mix-up character, he, he takes risks, but basically only with that. Like, other than with the overhead elbow, there's not a lot of r actual risk in Bane's gameplay. Stocked on meter is Deoxys. Okay, tried it, stabbed it, down two! Oh, that hurts on classical well, stuff here. A little bit of punish! And then instantly, the Clash did not want to take that damage. Two bars back for Deoxys Bow has keeping his. He's on debuff. No, back in there. He was hoping to see the shield bash. It didn't come. Boy, if that had happened, that might have been the end of it. That would have been clear as day, the end of the game. But Bow has utilizing his two bars. Deoxys using one bar to kind of, you know, to kind of put a stop to Bow as we're getting some health back. Oh, huge! Maybe the end. Is that enough? Is that enough? It is! Should have been his game, and Biohazard just keeping his composure, keeping calm in the situation, and just going play by play until he finds the win here. The tick throw, the armor through the venom. Okay. Oh, he actually gets a punish. Few characters do. A back three here. Slow approach. Oh my gosh, he just went for it. Yep. Can we talk about how great Bane is with a background bounce in the air? Oh my god, Biohazard does not want to give up on anything. He wants to control everything he can. He called that out! Oh my god! He oh. knew exactly what Deoxys' game plan was. Deoxys sees down two things. Okay, tick grab coming. Fine, I'm going off the wall. Biohazard had the counter all lined up. Just waiting for his moment, waiting to go, and here we go, the bait out from Deoxys. He's gonna make this hurt. He's in the corner, no restand. Hoping to see a jump didn't come. And funky interaction, actually Bane ends up out of it? That's one of those weird times where they don't get separated. Yeah, yeah they're right next to each other. <laughs> Deoxys going straight for the low attack here. I'm sorry, the, the down light attack. And what a whiff punish here by Deoxys. <laughs> two bars there for Biohazard. He still has two. Still very dangerous. Biohazard trying to make his way in, just inching in, just, you know, utilizing that walk speed from Bane. But we're okay. dashing whenever he has the opening. Okay. Overhead right there. The cross up! Oh boy! Man, that was a He's punish not for the air Oh my god. He flashed final. Three to two, I think, on meter. Yeah, Bane has more. He spent all three. He spent all three. He wants to make sure it hurts. No longer susceptible to the glitch from Injustice 1. Bane can actually do damage in the Clash animation. Hits him with the supercomputer and snatches him out of the air. Oh, Hoping... it wasn't enough? No, it wasn't. Looking for Can't get ahead of himself. I think he's kind of getting ahead of himself. You see him dashing. There it is, though. Level that Bane's level, uh, levels of Venom give him hits of armor, but when he's at level three, he actually doesn't take any hits from projectiles. Just so, ignores them. Just ignores them. Whip punish. Nice. Here's Deoxys now. Oh, could have gotten a little bit more. 
What a back off. No punish. Dux is now in trouble. Oh, hitting him before he gets nice. on the wall. The down two. I love how ready he was for that cross up jump three intention right there. What side was that on, David? I what don't side? Know. What are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> Leaving him in a standing position. Very dirty stuff here. Chucking the interactables, trying to get Ooh. some kind of hit. Background bounce oh, wasn't oh, in play just yet. All right. Level three. Level three Venom. Oh, my God. It's damage. It's damage city here, but Biohazard's got to back off. He is in debuff. He is susceptible to more damage as he comes oh, down yeah. from that, that, that Venom. I'm glad to see Deoxys move forward and actually find the hit on that. As you're saying, that's a that's when Bane is most worried. He does not want to get touched during debuff. He takes so much more damage when he's in that. Here's a punish. And he does it with just one bar and one venom. Nice little elbow drop there to just, uh, you know, make sure and ensure that that charge does hit. What, where did he was so far away for a second? Oh, nothing there. Oh, he did get it. Even though it was out of the air, it still worked. Yeah, just takes it all. No clash. All right, very nice. Deox is out of the corner. He's got some damage that he's dealing right now. A little bit of deep up there time. And he clashed. You know, if he had waited like 0.5 seconds longer, his Venom would have been fully recovered. He wouldn't start after this on debuff. But no big deal. It's just level one. Just level one. Yeah, not too bad. And I think even maybe Biohazard just wanted to reset the situation. Possibly just get the meter off of Blue Beetle. Mm. But down two. Just converted after the command grab whiffs. No attempt on the anti-air. Beetle has really good jumpings. Oh my god! Oh, and it's yeah. enough again! How many times do we see it? Bio Biohazard dumps. It takes so much out of you that you cannot keep going. So, because Gross defeated Sonic Fox and Losers, he kind of, you know, sat on that grenade <laughs> and, and stopped Sonic Fox from winning the tournament. That's right. And here we go, Honeybee, that patented flash. Gameplay here. Wow, the trade definitely working out there for DR Gross. Much better in his favor. Tried to get through something, nothing came. And just like that, Honeybee is back into it. The escape? Well, right back into the mix. A well timed escape, but the very scary thing about the, you know, trying to air escape against the flash is that even if he can't get close enough to punish you, you probably have to hold an overhead or low mix up right, yeah. into more damage. So. You know, usually not my go-to. I'd rather have it for, you know, push block to, to, to get him away. And, you know, it's, but, you know, Gross off to a great start here. Yeah. Or I guess, you know. Comeback of his own. Yeah, definitely a comeback of his own. Running away with that health bar. Hitting him with that black magic here. He did have meter actually when it hit. Does now. Oh, he was hoping to see the approach. Nothing came there from Honeybee. Oh, here's Gross. I mean, even, didn't have trait. Yeah, even when that speed force is activated, that move is still very, very right? fast. That's and very crazy. forward advancing. Okay. Oh, I don't know what's playing on the jukebox here, but Gross definitely knows now. And Gross is looking pretty good. Honeybee has a lot of meters. Yeah, three, I think to zero for Gross. So it's whatever Honeybee wants. Two. Two bars, definitely good. Especially 25%. Hold, holding on to that one bar. Sure. Yeah. Not a bad idea. Trying to approach, but Gross is super ready. Oh, this one's gonna hurt. Yeah, it's bad news right now for Honeybee. Stays alive, but really not for much longer. He cannot get touched. And that is gonna do it. That's gonna do it. That he plays is that he has Flash, super offensive character, and his others tend to be more zoner style. He's trying to complement the different matchups, and I think this makes sense here. No, yeah, that's definitely the best way to describe it. Com uh, complimenting those, those those troublesome matchups, yeah. those things where Flash just really just just can't hang. And right now, looking good for Honeybee. Pressuring a little bit, nicely done. Still in there, dang! He just melted that life bar. That was that, that was a <laughs> Super shocker. I, I can't believe how fast and how dominant that round was for Honeybee. Wow. They broke that jump actually was so floaty that he was over the back two. That's crazy. S somehow got over that back two here. And now Gross is in the driver's seat trying to make a comeback of his own. Meterburn forward three in the Temerity charge. It is safe here, folks. 
pushing him away. Chucking the stone bench here. And Black Adam just nice. blocks it with his forearms. Right out of the air. Great call by Honeybee. This time, Gross approaches. Hoping to see something he can take advantage of. But excellent defense right now by Honeybee. Blocked. Didn't tech the grab. Just was patient. Now he's got control again of the screen. Okay. Just chipping him out here. There you go. So Gross alive. But two bars on Honeybee's side. Out of the air. And just harassing all that chip at this stage of the game. That's a big deal. It definitely is. Hold on, the call out from Gross. What a read here. Knows that Honeybee was going to resort to the zoningness. No wake up right there. Honeybee was patient, and that's going to do it. Or maybe in this match here specifically, he might want to utilize a little bit more of that, that meter burn foot dive. Uh, you know, it does reach, go full screen, and, and it usually does clear over projectiles, no problem. But, you know, Honeybee's being very cautious about when he's zoning. You know, this isn't just a brainless act. He is being very meticulous, very nice. particular about when to press those zoning buttons. And her trade's super good, but you have to think about when to use it. You know, is it important enough to spend on any one moment or not? There's, there's a lot of uh, interesting questions, I think, that go into playing the character. Wow, the range was huge. He knew, he just knew. He knew he was going to take to the sky, possibly looking for that foot dive and just meter burning it to, to take advantage of those plus frames. Out of there. Oh, OK. Black Magic into the meter burn. Gives Gross a chance here. He's got to get a lot more, though. Gross with the jump in two here. Honeybee battles. Still moving. There's, uh, you know, a super. I don't think Gross would spend super. Yeah, I think it's more important to get meter back. Or yeah. get life back, excuse me. Yeah, no, it's definitely more important to kind of spread out your, your utility and spread out your resources here. It's Gross. Uh, goes for the for the clash and gets 25% back. Uh, giving him a little bit more wiggle room. Okay. Foot dive. The timing was so good. A little bit of damage afterward, but better than what would have would have happened. All great right, decision gross. there. Yeah, great decision. I, I feel like a lot of Black Adam players might have not used the meter, but when you're trying to make this comeback, you can't let them have anything on the table. Hey, there's Honeybee just looking for the jump. He was right. Spins his way in. Okay, down two. Gross getting the side switch even. Will there be a wake up? It's been a pretty slow uh, wake ups for Honeybee. It's, it's rarely done so. Well, I feel like uh, Gross hasn't really put Honeybee in too many situations. Right. You know, where, where you know, you, uh, an opponent would oh, want nice. to wake up. You know, Honeybee's more, more interested in playing the neutral, more interested in playing the full screen game, but Gross very close Ooh. to making this comeback. I mean, he was way down in life, too. Now it's looking a lot better for him. Doesn't finish, so he gets a better situation. Push block right into the face. No meter right now for Honeybee. There it is. Not fast enough here. Push and block, and it's... Oh, is that going to do it? No, he wanted another one. He may have overextended. Gross, is he going to get it? He does. Down to... Doing it. He talks about it time and time again, how players just don't think he's going to do it, and, you know... He's so good at, at timing it perfectly and just shoving that down to down your throat. Well, his delay before that, that to miss the jump three was perfect. So really good understanding of what was needed at the moment. He starts off this one with the life advantage now. That forward advancing mid does wonders there. But Starfire tries to do a lot of the Stardust shenanigans. You really can, uh, you know, just advance and, and hit her and punish her out of a lot of things it really shows you how much time and effort uh gross has put into understanding these starfire setups <laughs> dealing some damage from afar not a ton that's punish not really sure what honeybee was looking for there just kind of i don't know i feel like he just kind of gave it away with the tamaranian charge gross is in and just mauling at this point honeybee trying to play patiently Getting some damage here. Has some trade and he spends it, but no meter. Okay, it was a little later, I think, than Gross thought that Honeybee would jump. Yeah, I feel like Honeybee was waiting for that jump, uh, that down two, but really just waiting for any kind of movement at all. Saw him flinch, pressed the button, and you know, that's just the kind of player Honeybee is. Right, oh, Black Magic has a meter here. Keeping it unclassable. There's a lot of damage on this. 
swing oh, This around. might be it. Is that it? This last little hit? Not enough. But that's, that's going to be do, that, What are you going to do about that? Or maybe. Is it going to be okay? Will he make it? No! When you have so much meter... Sonic Blast, you're crazy, oh, sure. What? Here you go. Oh my god. So Big D had all the preparation time in the world, and it didn't help. <laughs> in tournament. It didn't help. <laughs> okay, well, it's going to be the mirror after all. Sonic Fox in the slightly browner version, I guess. Kind of a funky green brown. Yeah, you know, it's some each rocking the, uh, the, the, the purple, the purple latex. And uh, Sonic Fox, uh, I, I feel right away, I see what this Catwoman is doing. A little bit more heavy on, like, the Oki setup. You know, going in for those ambiguous jump in ones right after knockdowns. Oof, the tech. Gorgeous. I love how they're walking in and out of each other's jump two ranges, each, uh, each other's whip ranges. This is a really interesting little footsies battle here. Neither one wanting to overcommit. They both had the same idea. Hey. Sonic Fox stabbing in a little bit here. Down two! Maintaining control. And boy, he took that life bar. It was not fast, but he only took chip damage. You know, Samij thought it was his turn to swing, and Sonic Fox is like, nope, here's the back of my heel. Now we have the switch, but jump one actually works. I thought that Samij wanted that spot on screen. Didn't end up mattering. Sonic Fox building the life lead even still. Here's the clash. All right, three to two bars. What's Sonic Fox gonna do? He bets it. He said, you know what, I don't care. I don't need this meter. Yeah, when you have a life lead like that, what does that, what does meter mean, right? Just, well, I don't here, see why not. Yeah, well, Sonic Fox getting a meter of his own here, thanks to the damage he took from Samij opening him up here, looking for the low. Sonic Fox not oh giving it to him the instant jump one off that <laughs> interactable. That's wild. Here's Sonic Fox, delay into backdash. And Samij finding the hit. Yeah, delay into backdash is definitely a great option to, to really throw out. You know, the backdash is going to give you invincibility frames no matter what, and the delay is going to kind of mess up your opponent's timing. Hopefully you catch him overreaching, and you, you get to, to get him on the recovery. But, you know, uh, Samich is really making way with it and, and trying okay. to make this comeback. He is starting to do it. Yeah, he's starting to whiff punish, putting himself in good spots. Sonic Fox knew exactly when Samich would walk into that whip range. Crazy. Here's Samich now trying to pressure. Yes, gets the grab. He needs more, though. Is Sonic Fox going to choke this up? Is Samij going to run away with this? Is he going to make this comeback? Sonic Fox at least has another, uh, still has Clash. Well, can't really even take Chip at this point. You got yeah, a push block. Go. Forced to push block. Nothing wrong with that. And uh, definitely a great last resort there by Samij. Backs off, puts him on anything to do with Sonic Fox, and here comes that cat dash. Samij. Positionally, mix-ups were good. Everything worked out. I definitely think you're right about you know him not winning combo breaker really being that wake up call to him and him saying like okay it's early I can fix this now and I'll be okay. Yeah. And there with the Ooh. sweep going over the other side or at least it made it look like it. I don't think that was a cross up. I don't think it was. Spends it still gets pressure as a result. And then backing off here Samij. Ooh, good spacing by Sonic Fox, though. Great blocks. Individual little hits right now will matter a lot as they both try to figure out who gets the first significant hit after that series before. Neither one going for the jump, too. Okay, here's Samij now, finds the moment. Just as Sonic Fox was trying to come in himself. Oh, this is some scary stuff here. Catwoman in that jump back to range when you're up against the corner. Very tough stuff, a very... This is pretty much jail. It's just so yeah. hard to get out of the corner, so hard to block your way out. Samid's trying to keep control here. Not really over committing, but you know, back dashing. Ooh, very nice by Samid. I think he had that, that concept and that idea in his head yeah. for a while. Uh, and, you so, know, yeah. It was just a matter of time before Sonic Fox was forced okay. to, to, to really go in range of that bomb. Hoping to get through something there with Sonic Fox, but instead Samij finds another hit. And as strong as Sonic Fox looked in the first game, Samij is just taking absolute control of this game. Interrupting even with a lot of damage as a result. But Sonic Fox, let's see what he gets here. Needs more. I love that little side switch there by Catwoman jumping in and just deny your access to that interactable. What a whiff punish! Overextending is Sonic Fox 
Now the clash comes with three and three. We'll see what Samij does. Three for both. Three for both. Both players just getting really aggressive here. Samij trying to take anything from Sonic Fox and the off chance that he wouldn't what? use that last bar. Okay. And he spends it. He's got all the scratches available. But Samij, of course, still has the clash. And that's going to do it. I think we're going to minor buffs in there, too. So he's a little bit of a different character, but same game plan. And that game plan works well against Catwoman. It does, mainly because she really has no no way to get around the snow globe. Now right. you gotta pay attention to Captain Cold's character power there. It's him loading up his gun. When it gets to level two, that's when he shoots out the snow globe, the snow dome. But and it hasn't even come up at all. He has not charged up even a bit of that meter. He's got a lot of work to do left. Hasn't touched, well he's touched her I guess, but hasn't actually hit. Samiz not Look giving Sonic Fox the opportunity okay. here. Hold on. He is in control. What's going on over there on Sonic Fox's side? Settles himself down a little bit. Puts the puddle in front of him, and he's just going to... The range. He knew it. He knew it. He said, you the can't range. even block this. You can't even block this whip. That is a poorly placed puddle here yeah. by young Sonic Fox. The down two to snipe him out of the sky. This is a no-fly zone. Get out of the air and onto the ground. Ooh, God, that setup is so strong. If you try to do a wake-up, she'll just block, just land and block. Oh my god, this is embarrassing Do here. you see the life bar on Samija's side? I can't believe it. He, all he's taking is two hits of chip. That's it. Captain Cold gets 25% life back, but who even cares compared to what Samij has? Sonic Fox has to play so that he just doesn't get touched. I mean, this, he has to snowball the whole way. I mean, he, he can't let anything get by him at this point. The freeze happens, the push block was not quite well timed. So, oh, that was a huge drop there. Doesn't get the back row bounce. Punch. Sonic Fox is gonna regret that. Hold on, the ice okay. bottle here. Well, it up. He's gotta get to that level two again. He's not doing so. He gets a hit, a little lucky. In there, yeah, that's the life bar. Okay, somehow Sonic Fox is still alive. Oh, well, that's it. No air escape, no clash available to Sonic Fox, and Samij taking it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you really don't see that too much in a lot of games. You know, what What player can really hop from character to character and still feel comfortable, still, you know, have a, have a full understanding of, of, of the spacing in that character, the normals, and, and just the overall matchup and gameplay? No whiff punish there. Here's a chance. Sonic Fox getting a little bit. Did not go for the meter burn. Uh, on the mine there. Instead, just back to the footsies game, controlling things a little bit. I love the escape by the speed right there. That was plus, yeah. And uh, that string just keeping Samij at full screen as Sonic Fox just dives in, you know, eliminating that real estate and pushing Samij a little bit closer and closer to this corner. Backing off here to Sonic Fox. Hoping to see that Samij will overcommit. That's rarely Samij's game plan. Goes for the low on that. Let's see if he goes for it. Okay, the low, yeah. Out of the air, not the rest. And again. again! But you know what? He's really not getting too much damage out of there, so there really was no reason for Samiz not to do it again uh, for the second time. If you, if you, oh, he thought the lunge was gonna beat him! Are we gonna see an air kick off of the. No, we're gonna end the lunge. Lunge is so fast, yeah. right in your face, no need to respect anything. Uh, when you have a special move that acts the way Lunge does. Right. Knock down here. There'd be a wake up. Nothing. Trying to get out of there just as Samij did. Sonic Fox not trying to escape. Okay. Air escape. No punish. Overhead this time. Oh, yeah. Okay. Didn't finish the string. Very clever. Going over the other side. Looking for the cross up and just not finding the opening here. Samij slamming that whip, cracking it here, trying to find Sonic Fox, and Sonic Fox just not leaving himself open, keeping up his defense. The hit. Okay, as as, Samij. As soon as I said it, as soon as I said <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. it, he just eats the jump in two. It's match point Samij, but right now it feels like he's got a lot of work to do. Even Chip at this point, see Sonic Fox is going for that. But he doesn't have bar, and as a result, oh, what? We're sniffing it out.
Well, Sabij did bust out this IV uh, on, on War, I want to say War of the Gods, either this week or last okay. week, uh, in order to steal a win. Uh, apparently, it was a favorable matchup in IV's favor, and that's why he kind of went with it. So, I, we're definitely going to see a great IV. You okay. know, definitely no slouch here. Understands the gameplay here. Uh, Pukey out on the screen. Bark. Uh, bark on a... <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, barf on her. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, to, to really reduce the uh, any kind of chip damage yeah. that she could uh, possibly take. Oh, very nice. Try to get a little bit more damage, but the drop, and so backing off, she'd rather just control space. Doesn't have mix-ups up close, but back, moves back. She's got one of the best, like, forward trees in this game. Kind of oh, like yeah. Batman, where it just kind of throws herself forward. She, she closes the gap. But, that you running know, forward three. Yeah, yeah. But really, what, what Sonic Fox is doing against Big D, every time Big D went for it, Sonic Fox, yo, on reaction. On reaction, parrying it here. Wow. Because he, he didn't have the bar to meet him with a meter burn back three. He would definitely rather meter burn back three that move. Easily, no questions asked. All right. It's match point Sonic Fox. Didn't go for the rest of that string right there. Samich would have whiffed it. And still in here now. It should be the life bar as well. So we're going to go down to the final life bar here for both players. Noble Samich, Echo Fox, Sonic Fox. One of them makes winner's side top eight. The mine is down. Samich gets out of there, but does eat the Gotham Stars here. Just Trying patience. Now Samiz looking for the opportunity to summon his trade, to summon Pukey here, where he can just kind of, then there it is. Yeah. As long Harassment. As, as long as Samiz doesn't get hit, Pukey will stay there for a little bit uh, until the end of the, the, the timer. Oh, 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 it did work. That meter burn forward three from downtown. Such great range and a great combo starter all together. Sonic Fox spends two of his three, and now he's got the screen to control if he can. Long time until that trade comes back on Ivy's side. Way too far away. And what and a Samich finds that. I love that he ended up with this to get close again, get more damage out of it. Sonic Fox trying to get in there. Oh, Sonic Fox might be in trouble right now. He's Here. in a lot of trouble right now. Yuki got to be adding nice. so much chip damage. A beautiful throw there by Samij. Okay, meter burns it. It was fast. Does connect. Sonic Fox hits the low. In a little bit. Keep in mind, Samish still has his clash available. This is such an intense oh, situation. Oh, two bars! Samish just chipping. There it is! That's gonna do it! Samish sends Sonic Fox the loser's bracket. And Samish. I don't believe they live in the same household anymore. So, you know, I'm sure Breeder Voorhees has expanded as a player, maybe pricked up a few new tricks here and there that Makes Burger sense. King just wasn't ready for. It. But Deoxys here off to a great start against Tekken Master. Tekken Master going to Brainiac and Deoxys with, of course, his Blue Beetle as he is a Blue Beetle specialist here. Looking for that down two, doesn't Look at get this. it. Great blocks though by Tekken Master. You know, that's really good defense right there. I love the offense and some of that's executionally difficult too, but awesome defense by Tekken Master to just hang out. And that, that was a great move there by uh, Tekken Master, getting that interactable out of play as he saw how pesky Deoxys was being with it, Ooh. using the invincibility frames as you jump off of it. Here we go, the hard knockdown into the corner, chucking that free chip damage, plate of holes. He's been like jumping with that jump one a few times. He's hoping to just catch Deoxys in the air. Of course, you get the dive kick afterward. Deoxys has similar options, but just hasn't brought it in the same moment. Here's a punish. Oh, look at that. No, just oh, he didn't, have he didn't have the meter. No, look at him just dancing around beautifully with that trade, but this might be it for Tekken Master's first bar as Deoxys utilizing those two bars to make sure that it kills in that situation from Tekken Master. Not finding himself in too much of a, of a pickle here. No, but. he can kill very quickly. Oh, must have tried something else there, but instead the down two from Deoxys interrupted it. And this is good damage. Especially while he still has that first life bar up. I feel like it's all gravy at this point. Overhead. Had to spend a bar to get it. You gotta watch out. Sometimes those Brainiac players get a little pesky. They'll, even when they have the meter, they'll just do dive kick, and then dive kick, and then dive kick, thinking that you're looking for the overhead. Uh, the overhead that just never comes. So, possibly challenging there. 
Uh, what's the axis? Oh, punch. Yep. Big uh, chance here for Tekken Master. And a player, Tekken Master's caliber, isn't going to leave damage on the table. He's going to take those. He's going to punish Ooh. wherever he can. But Deoxys went right back to it. Still did the, the, the low anyway. It did hit, though. So here now is Clash. Tekken Master has two. And they both spend all of it. They both spend all their meter here. But I, I feel like, um, you know, Blue Beetle really keeping the pace here. Uh, because that, that, that projectile from Brainiac is a, a character power, it doesn't really build up too much bar. Oh, yeah. Didn't get anything else. And Deoxys is slowly being backed up into the corner. Looking for the escape, I think. Yeah, Tekken Master's looking for that wall jump. There it comes. And Deoxys is giving it to him whenever he wasn't expecting it Correct. here. Eating the kick as he jumps off oh, the wall. Oh, three? Yes. Me, uh, unclashable, excuse me. And now Tekken Master has the life lead, just like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. If he had kept it up, it actually might have been back because there would have been a lot of life coming back on Deoxys' side. Punish, no! And Deoxys has super ready to go. Oh, if yeah. Tekken Master gives him the opening, you know he's going to take it. He's oh no, that was an input error! He didn't take advantage of it! And he just charged right in. His team, they're doing a lot to try to bring more of a, of a representation to his region. And uh, you gotta definitely check out Habibi Wars. Oh, flipping over to the other side! And keeping Tekken Master in that, in that standing position here, unfortunately couldn't utilize too much pressure from it. <laughs> just waiting for the drone to come over. Oh, yeah, okay. Actually did hit right there. Jump one. I, I feel like Deoxys goes for a lot of jump ones because he can float, cancel away from them. Right. So they're, they're a little bit less risky in the, in the hands of uh, Blue Beetle. Very similar to, to what Cyborg does as well. Sure, we see that from Brainiac. It looks just like this. Just like that. So this is a very a very interesting air-to-air -air exchange from these characters. Yeah, we saw a lot of that from Brainiac, from uh, Tekken Master's Brainiac in the first game. We didn't see it from Deoxys, so I'm happy to see it go back to it here. Took a risk on the meter burn right there, paid off. Wanted, I think, the chip, but it didn't work. Did not work, but instead gets punished for his troubles here. Deoxys running away with it. He's got the corner, ends it with the command grab. Ooh, 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 very tricky. And not easy to do, by the way, either. Can Tekken Master find this? Okay, control, and he clashes super early. Two bars. Two bars, but he couldn't get that much life back. And, and you know what? Really what happened there is Deoxys just played him perfectly. Right, right. You know, making him overextend, getting back health that he could not regenerate just yet. Tekken Master assumed Deoxys would spend borrows on it. Exactly. Not what happened. That is exactly what happened. Here we go. And there's the Clash. There's a lot of meter this time. So Deoxys does not go down without spending Clash or bars. He's now spent both. Hailing that trade. Approach. Here he comes. And grabs the trade on the other side. Oh, Doesn't yeah. matter what side he activates on. It's more about <laughs> when he lets it go. It's wild to see that giant body. I mean, one of the biggest characters in the game is Brainiac, but he scoots around up there yeah, like a little bird. Yeah, he's definitely very mobile. Hold on, leaving him in a standing position, not giving him access to wake up attacks. The Oxus with a very smart setup. And again, this time the correct block by Tekken Master. Tried to get air to air. Not quite. No punish. Oh, yeah, just I guess must have thought that there would be a meter burn like this, which is safe. It was, in fact. Okay. Can't get touch now. Tekken Master trying to slowly approach. If he finds the right hit, it's going to do it. Well, okay. Keep it up. Yes. What can he get after? This is the question right now for the next mix up. Where's he going? The grab, and it works. Mix it up a little bit, and what a perfect read here by Tekken Master, trying to run away with this set. Very close last game. Tekken Master, you look at the score and it says 2-0, and I don't think that tells the story of this matchup so far. Definitely not. Tucking the Interactable out of play. The Interactable is great off of, uh, you know, utility characters, non-power characters. So I think Tekken Master just kind of wants to get it out of play. Out of there. Okay, ready for it. Deoxys with the down two anti air. He starts this thing off. Great blocks. I love that setup, leaving him in a standing position, just kind of giving up a little bit of, of, of combo damage just for, for a possible reset here. 
And Deox is shaking it off, shaking off those two games, especially that second one that came down to the wire here. Ooh. He has seen a lot of just blocking by Deoxys, so Tekken Master now starting to get a little funky with his movement. Here's a big punish. And what a call out here by Tekken Master, making that shield bash whiff. That shield bash normally is safe on block, but if you make it whiff, it's got a lot of recovery. Oh, yeah, blow it up. Sweet. Tekken Master not afraid to wake okay. up. Deox is really not giving him a, enough of a reason to stop. Three bars, two. See what they spend on this. It's going to be two for zero for Tekken Master. So Deox has now spent more than he could actually get back, but not by much. Okay, interrupted. Very nice. Deoxys will spend the bar on it, and he gets a little bit more damage. Here now is Tekken Master getting out of things. And no meter on Deoxys' side, so it's whatever Tekken Master wants. It's only one, 10, or 15% back. Checking out that trade, that, those missiles here from Brainiac. Trying to find an opening here. And, you know, I feel like a lot of this fight, you know, okay. when they when they take to the air, it's definitely in Tekken Master's favor. How did he know that was still going to hit? Perfectly timed. That is one of the weirder uh, background bounces. Mm -hmm. Chucking the interactable right into Deoxys' face, getting that damage. Tekken Master's in a good position right now. Two bars for Deoxys. He's got to find something for himself. Tekken Master is just, yeah, jumping up into the air. He's very safety kind of play. Well, he didn't actually cancel into the dive king on that. Not sure what he was oh, looking for. He gets the background bounce. No! Escape! Deoxys lives! Not for long. It's Tekken Master eliminating Deoxys 3 to 0. defense, whatever it is, he is very untraditional. Yeah, he's definitely a mix of both. And utilizing that that character power here, Honeybee gets the wake-up punish. Very uh, rare instance here in this game. But uh, that character power drops him down to a tiny little hitbox that can hit you with lows, overheads, or even throws. Right. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just so pesky. And it's kind of like a, a, a nice way for Adam to get in, get damage, and then back off, wait for it to be up oh, again. No. Okay, just starts it off with the overhead, fine. Right back into things here is Honey Bee. Another drop twice in one round, very rare to see that. Let's see what he goes for here. He tried to delay things. Okay, the overhead ends up doing it. A meter burn back three. Really great anti-air uh, option, pretty much for almost any character in this game. Uh, does absorb a hit of armor, so you know, get rid of that jump in attack. Okay, here's another chance for Honey Bee to seal the deal, and he does. Gur finding himself in a really bad spot here. However, he does have access to his character power. Can he utilize it here? Turn it on and go ham here. You have to respect the multitude of options. It's not just that. He could have teleported out. He could have done jump into jump three. Really good button. He could have done float on the way down. A lot of things for him. Oh, Gur chasing down that back dash. What a great call here. Putting Honeybee into the corner and buying himself a little bit more real estate, which is really what he needs to do once he does get the hit here. Successful trait activation here. If you do survive it, you know. the second time we've so we've seen on reaction that ground pound twice for Honeybee when he sees Gurgo for his own ground pound. For his own, yeah, his own little Different. stomp. Yeah, stomp, I guess is a better way to put it, yeah. Almost did it again there with the jump in, at least got the pressure going. Great air escape by Gurr, recognizing that back three animation from the flash. Inching away, trading with the down two. Here Can we go. Make it work. Yep, some damage out of it. Oh, I think he punished. That was definitely a punish, Gur, not anticipating it correctly. Now, when Adam gets out of the character power, okay, okay. oh, man. All right, oh, all right. Oh, man. All right. Now, when Adam find the hit or the grab, or do you sort of cancel and back off earlier? I feel like they always just kind of look for the, they just look for the hit. And, and yeah. that character power gives Adam one of the easier uh, first hit initiatives. You know, it, it, it's real tough. There we go. Sets out the blue crawler. And a little bit of light zoning. No big deal, Honeybee just walking forward. I really like that. Ending the trade instantly. Oh my god! I can't believe that was his reaction. I mean, that's, well, look, when, that's when, ridiculous. When a little crawler is coming at you, a lot of people really just want to wanna jump over it. 
they don't want to block it, right. and that's what Gurr's feeding on. Right. That's the tendencies. Understanding Honeybee hitting him there with a counter. Gurr possibly trying to do okay. something else. Another reset here. Good block of the low. And there's the sweep. Okay, yes. Gonna hurt. <laughs> yeah, just like that Honeybee. Uh, hasn't quite taken the round, but very close. Yeah, that's gonna do it. It was a defensive throw, though, so out of the corner. And Gurr gets a lot of screen now. Again, Again it's very right. consistent. Honey and B. look, I mean, respect Honey because that's not easy to react to, but he's done it consistently. Yeah, definitely. 100% uh, purely reaction based and stopped right there in the running man stands. Didn't want anything to do. The double overhead after the float. Honeybee not ready for it. And Gurr converting it to a lot of damage Ooh, here. Damage over time. The green junk. <laughs> Getting out of there. Teleport, no meter burn. So no hit, actually, but pretty recover, pretty fast recovery. Another on reaction thing by Honeybee, but not the rest. Allows the clash. Let's see what they go for on this. It's just one apiece, and they both spend it. Very interesting choice. A lot of Flash players love holding onto that bar because it means so much combo potential for them. Oh, he did the grab! And how are you supposed to see, how are you supposed to react to a throw? No, you're when, just the, calm. when your opponent is down to a tiny little molecule oh. here, throwing down the hazard. Uh, uh, those, so, Honeybee has played against uh, a, a, a Bane a million times, right? Yes. It's, it's a match that he knows really, really well. Almost nobody gets to say that about Adam because there are so few atoms. And so at, at this level of play, it's really just Gurr. And if you haven't played a lot against Gurr, you don't have that experience. Yeah, you, you gotta give him games. You gotta give him games if you wanna Punish. find out how he works. Okay, yeah, it blows up the trade immediately. Ah. Oh, you okay, what the? Wake up, why not? No reason not to, what's he gonna do? Yeah, some good damage on that, the escape. And the pound there, hitting the hitting the the, the, the temple or the, the little pyramid there, and it just like spreading out to the entire ground. But Honeybee finding his footing here, getting that jump in, and you know sealing the deal here for this first round. Now let's see how far he can take this little pixel inside, coming a mile away. That was sick. What an anti-air here by Honeybee. A little stagger pressure. And Gurr gets out of the way, gets out of dodge. Ooh, it actually whiffed. And there's a clash. One bar. Flash has none. And it is indeed going to be one. 15 back. Flash just playing patiently. Honeybee just doing his regular thing in there occasionally. And Kerr stomping on the ground. Uh, you know, spreading that hitbox over the entire floor. Trying to get out of there, but this is gonna hurt. No way you want to air escape because you know Honeybee's gonna continue the combo. Nice. And chip. Okay, well, really no big deal from Honeybee's perspective. It's gonna be quite a while until Honeybee's worried at all. No, it doesn't end up coming up down two. He was looking for the jump. Had exactly the right. MKX and throughout all of Injustice 1, right? And, you know, big, big hats off to Coach Steve. You know, if, if you're a big fan of Gurr, you have to be a big fan of Coach Steve. So again, this is to get into loser side top eight, and Honeybee is one game away from doing so. Let's see if Gurr can make the changes he needs to make. All right, gets the trade combo, some damage. He's got the corner for himself now. Gurr looking like a completely different player in this yeah, a game. A more active, I would say. Yeah, I definitely don't know what Coach Steve wow. told him, but wow. it's working. Coach Steve keeps whispering sweet nothing since a Gurr's ear because it is working here as Honeybee looking like he might lose this this, this lead here. Out of there. And he goes into the trade here again. Good damage. What has he got? No, it's just it's trying to run away. Couldn't quite get the crawl. And now the flash doing a lot of damage as the flash will do. It's gonna be enough. Oh my. I mean, to be fair, that's two bars. That's two bars. That's a lot of resources here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I think what, what Coach D possibly oh, might nice. have told uh, Gurr is to, to start using Trey in less obvious spots. You know, just because it's up doesn't mean that you need to use it right, right. now. The multiple hitting jump in too from the flash, the demise of Gurr as he looks for that meter burn back three. That meter burn back three only has one hit of armor. What a heartbreak here as Gurr forced to use the clash, forced to set the position back into the neutral. Now he could have spent more than that. He only spent one bar though. That's on him. Let's see if that pays off. Approaching and that range on the jump. There's excellent hitbox on it. No, not the rest. Individual hits this are mounting. They're adding up. Oh, yeah. He has to hold on to this, though. No air escaping. That's just going to be a waste of meter with the character Into power. The challenge. He's out of there. It's a punish. He waited for it. How did he try to gate this? Oh, that might be it. And this is enough. Meter burn forward three. To it when you meter burn it, you just can't air escape either. Great presence of mind there by Gur. So now final game for both. One will be eliminated in ninth place. One will make top eight and play tomorrow. There it is. That's what Gur was hoping for. The crawl comes up. Wow, that actually beat. I mean, there is a hurt box in the little atom. I mean, you can definitely hit him, but I'm surprised that that did. Yeah, no, there definitely is a hurt box. You see it a lot when uh, you know they have to go up against something that's so active, and, and Honeybee understands that. You know, he's really, really done his homework here. All right, all right, all right, all right. here's the Honeybee. Match point to get into top eight. He walks in, he just was patient. I think he was just low blocking, just to hold the down. And he's harassing so much with down one. Let's get spoiled. So, Gurr. One bar spent on that. And, gets that and right into the trait. Into what? Is he going to block this whole thing? He, he did. did. Look, if you block that whole thing, you deserve to get the punish. Yeah, no, that you definitely do. Not the easiest thing. Oh, this may be it. I Next hit. Dead. I, I think he's dead. I is think that he's dead. it? Yeah, oh, my dead. God. You're I think right. he's dead. This is Honeybee. This is the Flash God. What's going to be the starting move for Everking? Trying to find a little bit of space between himself and Scar. Back it up, and he does get the hit here with the back two three. A pretty safe string, a, a string that just kind of built a little bit of space between himself and his opponent. But for Everking, does sometimes actually do the back two in the slide. Might have been why that overhead hit. Possibly, especially when he's when he's looking for that first hit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He, he has bats ready, right? Like that's exactly. it's pretty common, to be honest. And what a block there by Scar going on the right side. Unfortunately, he didn't block that low and was susceptible to that entire string here. For every king trying to snipe him out of the air. Waited for the bat. You know, Scar's down in life, but I like a lot of his decisions so far. Looking to clear the air. And there's the bat for the punish into the corner. That'll do it for every king takes the first round. And you definitely want to utilize that meter to make sure that that health bar is gone. Make sure that your opponent stays in the corner here. And, and you know, that's just perfect spacing here by Forever King. Perfect spacing and awareness. Trying to go in still. Scar harassing, yes. The hit comes. Pretty good damage. Starting things off. You know, you're usually looking for the overhead against Brainiac, but the low, that range that it has, is pretty solid. A little bit of a drop here, and Scar caught doing something, pressing buttons, or doing something that just wasn't to block low. And what a block there on the on the on the reset here. Forever King looking to extend. Scar with three. Okay, nothing from Forever King feels confident enough. Scar slow approach again. Love the movement right there by Forever King out of the corner, playing safe. Oh, love it. Punish, not quite there. Oh, boy. That's a big swing. You know, if that had been a punish by Forever King, not only is he still alive, but he's taken off a bunch of life from Scar, and he's got a pressure opportunity. Totally different story now. Trying to make things happen with Scar. Maybe overextending just a bit. So it's going to hurt here. Going to leave Scar in a standing position. Yeah, that'll do it. Even there, keeping him on the ground and, and, you know, keeping him nice and low. Not really giving him the opportunity to air escape, uh, you know, where it would have been safe. Air escaping when your back's in the corner is pretty scary stuff, man. Mm -hmm. uh, just because you air escape doesn't mean you get out of the combo just yet. You really have to nice. time it perfectly. Are we going to see a reset here? No. 
just goes for pure damage here. Still has three bats ready to go. Let's see if Forever King can make the hit happen. Looking for Brainiac to be in the uh, be in the air. And you know, when Batman straight is loaded there, you, you gotta wonder and you gotta just know that he is looking to release those with any gap that you give him. Ooh, okay. Scar trying to approach on the basis of that, but I love the wake up and Forever King just puts up a huge projectile wall. Okay, would have been shift so Scar spends the bar, ends up not mattering anyway. Forever King, I really like that he's clearing the skies. It's really what he's paying attention to as Scar approaches. Nice. Flipping over to the other side here. Are we going to see a restand? Oh yes, we do. That Go was so expensive. That was two bars completely lost. Down two did not work. And this is all Forever King right now. Scar finally does bring out the Clash, but just Forever King has had total control. Pressure, offense, even zoning, everything's worked. Yeah, man, he's been really just like making the shots here and, yeah. and you know, really taking it to Scar, and, and Scar is finding himself in a bad spot. I wouldn't be surprised if Scar changed characters completely. Yep. I know you were you, you, you were complimenting his, his Brainiac, but you know this might be a matchup thing. Yeah, no, I, I think you're right about that. This approach has been very difficult for Scar. Of course, you got to contend with both upward battering and the mechanical bat and conversion into grapple. I, that's just not an easy approach. But you know what I think is really sly about Forever King is I feel like he wasn't utilizing the upward battering until the second match. You know, until he, uh, I think okay. right, yeah, okay. you know, if, if you do that to an opponent on the first match, you're just kind of like giving him, giving him the, the, the ammunition or giving him the information of, wow, he can really deal with my jumping shenanigans. Maybe I'll switch. Right. And I feel like kind of, Forever King, I, I, I feel like I couldn't see where the opening was. I couldn't see where Scar was like, okay, I, I know what I'm doing wrong here. And... Yeah, typically there's at least, like, you can identify what you should have done, but I don't really know. And this is a lot of control right now by Forever King, and still is. The bat? Oh, he didn't bring it out even. Oh, didn't anticipate the cross, it didn't anticipate uh, Scar being over there on the other side, and Scar finally getting something going here. Oh, oh. Takes the bear trap out of his hand. Was that a cross the dive kick? I don't know. Hard to, hard, hard to tell, I guess. A very, a very tough to do, also. You yes. Know, it's a, I feel like it's a very specific spot. Yeah, here. it's like not even intentional sometimes. Yeah. No, definitely not. And Forever King, you know, just showing that he understands what kind of execution you need in the corner, understands how to maximize the damage as best as he can. Checking those Slowly batteries. Slowly walking. Yeah, that's really been the name of the game for both of them. This is how a lot of the set has looked so far. Forever King just throwing it out, building a little bit of bar while doing so, and Scar, you know, seemingly at a loss as to how to make a credible approach. Bring that forward three. Okay. This is just, I mean, it's not just that Forever King is zoning well, it's that when Scar is in, Forever King makes the excellent defensive calls, he will turn de uh, his own defense into his own offense well. It's like he's just had everything. Oh, and covering his bases here, Scar sending out that drone, dropping that nice little projectile onto the ground here. It's Forever King trying to get a throw to happen. Well, Scar's on the ropes. Three bars versus two, and Forever King feels content enough to just not spend anything. By the way, he's been playing for Scar to have an extra 25% life on, uh, on the life bar. It just doesn't feel like it matters all that much. Yeah, again, excellent preemptive anti-air. He yeah, I mean, has the bat, the mechanical bat now to keep it up. It's a very quick up bat ring. You yeah. know, it, it just comes right out of his hand, straight to where it needs to go. Wow, the tech, and immediately into it is Forever King. He needs maybe one more mix-up. This might be it. That was the reset there here. There you go. There you go. Forever King with a very dominant 3-0. Train up a lot. Uh, Rewind made top eight at Combo Breaker. He was sent to loser side uh, by Deoxys here. Yeah, and uh, did, did they play at Combo they, Breaker? They did play at Combo Breaker, and I believe Sonic Fox yeah. bested him in. Uh, it was either in top eight winners or top eight losers. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised. And look at this, Sonic Fox going straight to Red Hood, not playing any games. Mm. You know, smart. I don't see. I don't see <laughs> smart stuff by Sonic Fox. 
Yeah, considering how he lost to Samid, kind of screwing around at the start of it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, that's definitely what happened, and that, that's, that's, I'm just calling it the way it is. Yeah, I think you're right. All right, and uh, Rewind, oh <laughs> looking God. for something here, and he's a Gotham star right to the face. Sonic Fox, oh, I love that he dashed in and didn't attack, he just dashed and waited. It's so threatening. Two bars spent, and it feels like Sonic Fox has just had such control that that two bars, you know, he's it, it, happy to give it up. Who cares? Yeah. Yeah. And not only that, but uh, Rewind actually slightly overextended there. Uh, his red health bar went to max, meaning that, you know, there was a little bit of damage that he didn't get back. You know, kind of like a, an in inefficient use of right. red bar. Meter burning it for that extra chip damage, also trying to keep it nice and uh, nice and in his favor afterwards. Woohoo, the range. Here we go with a challenge here. Rewind getting on the board, doing some damage, not only doing damage, but putting Sonic Fox into the corner. Okay, nice. And what a block here by Sonic Fox. Can he get there? There it is. That was a punish. That yeah. was a perfect punish of those air guns by Noble Rewind. So, okay, first life bars aside, Rewind is looking a little stronger. He's moving a little bit more, getting some punishes, doesn't there? No, I, I guess that might have been too low. Yeah, was, yeah. So I guess Red Hood has to be high enough because that was a reversal there by uh, Noble Rewind. Couldn't have come out any faster once it made contact. Right? Right. I think it's more about, you know, when it whiffs or when it when it's uh, a little high in the air for Red Hood. And what a punish here. here. Now. Understanding the interactable, understanding that he is susceptible to, to, to a full combo punish. But even this chip is something Rewind can't afford. I'm surprised we didn't see a push block. Here we go. He really can't get touched now. And it's going to be hard. There, will he spin a bar? I'd be surprised to see. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking for exactly that. Whoa, whoa, looking for it. Firestorm in this particular matchup, or maybe against this particular opponent. But maybe Sonic Fox knows a little something about Firestorm than the rest of us. Mere mortals don't. <laughs> oh, oh, the mine. Yeah, getting tripped here by the mine. So Block and low. In the last game, we didn't see too much strong zoning. That wasn't necessarily the name of the game, but it works. It's good. And no commitment here by Rewind. He had the perfect read with that neutral jump, but just didn't believe. What? Smacking him right out of his airspace, right out of his, it's just, he was trying to advance. He was trying to get in and Rewind with the complete denial here. Bar for bar. Mm -hmm. Sonic Fox is in a little bit of damage here. Chip. And good blocks there by Rewind, understanding that the meter burn portion of that lunge oh. is an overhead, but Sonic Fox sealing the deal here uh, with, a, with a jump and gun attack. Sonic Fox threatening at any time he can move forward. That's plus on block. He's also got walking lows. There it is. Getting open up here by the overhead. Not sure if Rewind is pressing a button or not, but he definitely wasn't pressing a button there, getting hit by that throw. And Sonic Fox inching away, trying to Jeez. run away with this life lead. Oh man, and he did go in. Making it a little tricky. Well, okay. Maybe too tricky for his own good. Yeah, it was definitely a weird little, not not quite a hard knockdown, more of like a, a semi-hard knockdown. Oh boy, Black Adam is in big, big trouble. So Rewind takes that, but he can't get touched. I mean, Clash doesn't even matter at this point because nothing that he gets hit by will not kill him before he can clash. And Sonic Fox is looking at me because the build's a meter. Once he gets a bar, it might be all she wrote. And, uh, you know, Rewind just needs to be a step ahead of go. him. Yeah, oh. as soon as that happened, that was it. <laughs> yeah, no, he was... He was now, that was the first of the of a major event where he's made top eight, and it was it was uh, him breaking a string of bad luck of getting ninth places at events. And right now, that looks like where he's headed. Better start for him to this round, though. Yeah, definitely getting something going here, utilizing that background bounce, and uh, you know, holding on to that bonus Ooh, meter here. The dash, he just passed the mine. Okay, that was cool. Yeah, Sonic Fox just wasn't ready for it, wasn't ready for him to get out, and he read it like a book, going for the interactable in the corner just to get out. Sonic Fox gets the hit first. And he went for the low, okay. That's, that's the tricky stuff, is, is just how infrequently Sonic Fox Ooh. meter burns that low mine, because it does detonate right away. Right. Combo launcher, all that good stuff. 
good block there by Rewind. Okay, yeah. Looking for that win button, the yeah. snap of his fingers here. <laughs> Uh, but unfortunately for Rewind, that orb is still active, which means he's got to wait a little bit longer to get that trait back and ready to go. Yeah, he'd love to have it to cancel things. Is that chip death? Yes, it is. So Sonic Fox is at match point to make top eight. And with the boots here, knocking him down uh, in the corner. A nice delay wake up by Rewind, kind of throwing off uh, Sonic Fox's timing just a little bit here. Oh, oh what a tech. And then out of the air as well. Sonic Fox waits for his opponent to get up. Here's some chip. All right. Oh, and the Palpatine here just to get him off, put him at full screen. Not sure where he really wants to be, though. He does have a slight life lead, so I think he does want to nice. trade here. And what a punish here by Rewind. Can he Ooh. get on the board? Flips out. Oh, he wanted unclassable damage. That would have been cool. Yeah. He wanted unclassable damage real bad. Oh, no! And there oh, it is. okay, yeah, yeah. Nice. So he's shaking out of... You know, the momentum and the onslaught of Sonic Fox. And now Rewind can really, really get something going here for himself. Ooh. Interruption there by Sonic Fox, maintaining pressure. He tried to anti-air, but no, jump two works. That's a nice little floaty jump there by Black Adam. A lot of people don't anticipate it here. Yeah, of course there are downsides to having a floaty jump, but then in some ways it's nice too. You can get over anti-airs in a way that some characters cannot. Definitely, or, or just kind of just overall throw off the timing, you know, and, and that's that might be something that Sonic Fox needs to adjust to. Here we go. Confirmed by Rewind comes. Escape into continuing damage. Not a lot, though. Yeah, no, but he definitely did sniff it out. He did know that Sonic Fox was going to utilize those two bars for the air escape. And right now, Rewind is looking really good here. Yeah. Looking like he's going to be tying this up. The Sonic Fox doesn't adapt. The Sonic Fox doesn't go. Switch to the other situation. The Palpatine here, meter burning it for a limited power here. Rewind looking so good right now. He really has control all of a sudden. He's trying to play patiently. He doesn't want to overcommit here. That was a punish. Sick. There's a oh. Counter. There's a little bit of a counter. I guess Sonic Fox maybe trying to back that. Just didn't want anything to do with Black Adam up close here. Right. Wow, he's pressed the button in a very funky spot. But it was the right spot, and again, we have match point. Sonic Fox. Think about the Gotham Stars here again with the Black Magic here. Boots, and Sonic Fox gets the clash. Two bars for him. And he spends both. He's very close to the third. Yes. Yeah, I feel like in this matchup, both players are, are kind of always doing things, always throwing out projectiles. So I think Sonic Fox was was content with the idea that he will go back to oh meter building. God. Hold on, just smacking his advancing forward. That's so hard to do. You have to have such reactions. The setup here, blows him up. Oh boy, that's gonna do it. And rewind is at two to two. Look at that. His, his cold got destroyed by Samij, and it's what he's going to go to here with his tournament life online. For Sonic Fox to not make top eight would be a giant, giant upset. I don't care who beats him to do so. It's a, it's an upset. It is. You're 100% right. Sonic Fox is just that good of a player here, but hold on. Getting something going here. Gets the back throw putting Rewind a little bit closer to the corner. Now just finding himself in a bad spot. We might be seeing puddles. Oh, yeah, it can get real tricky in this corner. Oh, okay, let's him escape. Nice. He jumps out of there, gets him with a foot dive straight down, and Sonic Fox is not ready for it. Wake up with gun. All right. I mean, he did back off, so he kind of just showed him, all right, go ahead, build a little bit of meter. And Dash is go in. Okay, movement here. Interruption again. Didn't spend bar on it. And a whiff punish, and just like that, here's Rewind. He's at match point to beat Sonic Fox to eliminate him. To eliminate him and deny him any dreams of making that top eight, any dreams of possibly winning this tournament. Okay, but Sonic Fox, again, three times he has had match point here. This is the third. Can he make it happen, or can Rewind make this complete comeback? Now watch out, Snow Globe, almost ready to go. Rewind cannot give him any okay. more breathing room. Okay. He will start it. It's almost there. Rolls out. The punish comes. And you know he's going to, yep, charges it up. So the clash. Rewind has a lot of meter. 
utilize this chew bar. Still has one to hold on. Pretty much a second one to back that one up as well. However, Sonic Fox did get the level two trait. And, you know, the snow globe is ready to go. Yeah. Rewind cannot give him enough. Can't give him a lot of breathing room. Oh, interruption there. Not a lot out of that. Meter burns this one. Here's Palpatine. Still has that level two trait. The anti-air instantly with the clash. Sonic Fox, two bars. I think rewind on one. Two also. And they both spend two. They both spend it all here. When Black will Sonic Fox bring out the trait if he gets the chance? But he hasn't. He hasn't. I think he doesn't want to test rewind's oh, uh, reactions. He wants to get a, a safer situation. Right. Get where, a setup for himself. Yeah. He, he doesn't want to leave this it. This may be it. This may be it now. Oh, boy. This is actually a tough spot right now for Rewind to be in. He's caught. He's caught. Is he going to freeze? Yes, he is. Oh. Nothing really Rewind could have done. Possibly push The block. setup here. He's trying to delay. Whoa. And that's going to do it. Sonic Fox somehow still qualifies for top eight. And Sending Rewind out Whoa. again at ninth. Rewind made top eight at Combo Breaker. And you know he wanted to continue that trend. But it's back to ninth place for him.